So now he does it. Oh, you got pack of three musketeers? No! Hey, what's up, guys? We're going to be rocking a golem triple spell deck with log, poison, and tornado. You're going to have night witch and mega minion to ensure that you can actually have a fair matchup against pekka decks. You're going to have the bat spawn from the night witch and the dps of the mega minion to damage down any pekka deck that you play against. A lot of people are running Mortar Bait or Minion Horde, so you're going to have Baby Dragon, Nato, Poison. You're going to have the works. This deck is really strong in the meta, and you guys can use it for tournament play, grand challenges, or ladder. This hand is horrible, man. I have three spells and a golem. What are those? I can't cycle anything. Okay, you're going to go drop Goblin Gang. I guess I can go cycle a log. Okay, drop Barrel. Otherwise, I can't really do anything again. All right, so he's going to go for Hunter. Hunter is going to go walk up like to the middle of the map and be rendered useless. He can't really apply Gresham opposite lane either. I mean, I guess you could, but the Hunter is really not going to do so well. As soon as that locks on, I go for Lumberjack. That is a dead Hunter. I'm going to wait for one of them to lock on, then I go in for the Night Witch because the Ice Golem is still there. I have to, I have to let one lock on at least. Do I want to go in for a baby dragon? I feel like that would have probably been the better play. I don't know why I didn't do it earlier. I should have done that way earlier, man. Yo, he's got musketeers with hunter. Okay, this is going to be the hog rider deck, right? Or am I just confused? Oh, I tried to bounce the hunter in front of the ice comb. It didn't work. All right, I have to nato everything to the middle. So then we incur less damage on our towers. Do you not have Hog Rider in this deck? Or are you running a really funky variation with Hunter and Three Musketeers? I haven't seen anything like this before. Got Goblin King instead of Skeletons. I'm going to go Mega Minion in the back and we're just going to wait and see what he wants to do. Really don't want to go and cycle into him. So those two Muskies should die, so I'm going to go for a Poison. Could have been a little bit better of a placement of a Poison, not going to lie, guys. As a result, we're going to have to sacrifice the baby dragon for the greater good. And then go Lumberjack right on top of the one musky. So now he does... Oh, you got pack of three musketeers? No! <laughs> pack of three musketeers with Hunter? What? What do we do to deserve this? What type of karma do I have, guys? Someone, please. I, I don't under... I, I can't understand. I don't understand. I never will understand. There's no way that this is a real deck. This is insanity, man. All right, I'm going to go for Lumberjack. We're going to try to make some type of counter push, but this is horrible, isn't it? Bats are still alive. The P.E.K.K.A. should die. Okay. I don't want to poison that. I want the... I want the Hunter to die first. Then I want to go in for a Golem and see if we can make something happen that way. So I want to use my tower as a resource. Then I want to go in for a Golem. Hunter probably dies, right? So I'm going to have to poison on defense, most likely. More than likely. So I'm going to start my poison already. If he drops anything else, I will log it. Otherwise, I'm just going to let those things die. And I'm going to go in for Baby Dragon here. I think we might cop the W. I think the Golem Explosion might do him dirty, boys. I'm going to go in for a log. The big log of justice rolling right through. And oh my gosh, the Baby Dragon finishes off the tower. Holy crap, was that a hard counter? Why is that a deck? <laughs> Oh man, I challenge you guys to come up with a harder counter to my deck than this. There is no way. It's not feasible. This is unreal. This is not real life right now. All right, guys, we got a game against a Colombian, Fernando CR. I'm going to go in for a golem to block that mortar shot. Mortar is not allowed to hit our tower, so we got to chill. Got to make sure that we don't sauce out like a mega minion right into a minion horde. Oh, he's got Pekka. Okay. <laughs> he's one of them. I'm going to let that mortar lock on because I need to kill the P.E.K.K.A. A lot of bats will spawn, so I felt like dropping the uh, Night Witch instead. Instead of going in for a Baby Dragon, we were able to kill things a little bit faster. He's going to have mortar with Royal Ghost and P.E.K.K.A. This is going to be a way more difficult matchup than I thought. Jeez, man. So I'm going to have to go for Lumberjack on defense. And I think that the Mega Minion will get at least one swipe. Lumberjack plus the Bat. Bury the Bat plus Lumberjack. All right, we're going to get a lot of damage with that. He actually zapped it. Oh, my gosh. All right, so he doesn't have too many zap bait cards if he has Rogue Ghost and Pack in it. Those are two slots. I don't really want to log, though. 
I presume he probably doesn't have minion horde. Oh, he's got hog rider. Do you not realize that NATO is still a thing with this? You're wild, man. <laughs> there is no way that he has minion horde, so I feel very confident going and saucing out the uh, the baby dragon there. Last possible second, we sauce out the golem. And yeah, I think I just go in for a night witch, accumulate a lot of bats, just wreck the P.E.K.K.A. and then have a pretty nice supporting unit counter push on him. Obviously the golem dies, but the golemites plus the bats, I, oh, are you serious? He had space for minion ward? All this time, he was deceiving me. Yo, I feel like I just got cheated on by this man. He's, uh, he's not, uh, he's not committed to this relationship of like, tell me what he has. He just lied to me this entire game, dude. I don't feel good about this. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. I'm gonna have to go sauce out a Night Witch. I know that he's gonna end up going in for, uh, Another P.E.K.K.A. as soon as we go in for a Golem, unfortunately. That's not something I'm looking forward to at all. The double win condition of Doom. Wait, if we can kill the P.E.K.K.A. and then go drop a Golem after we kill the P.E.K.K.A., I think we might be in a decent situation. Look at all the air units that we have. Putting in work on top of the P.E.K.K.A. Gonna go in for a Lumberjack on top of the Hog Rider first and foremost. And then I go in for a Golem and have all these supporting units. I think we might be able to thrive, guys. Especially since that Mortar... Did not get a nice, or the uh, Pekka did not get a juicy hit off on me. And then the Mortar redirects on top of the Golem instead of the Lumberjack. Let's go. We might have it in the bag, boys. I'm going to go in for a preemptive poison. I'm going to go in for a NATO because he's probably going to go in for a Minion Horde. Even if he didn't go in for a Minion Horde, I want to stockpile close to the tower. So then we're able to get that glorious Baby Dragon Belch damage. And we somehow, some way, manufactured a way to win that game. Let's go. All right, guys. We got a game against Johnny Doom, undefined. He is screaming his name at me with the all caps. I never appreciate that, by the way. When you run an all-caps name, oof, I don't like that. I'm going to go Lumberjack, same lane. We're not going to commit because we still don't know what he's running. After seeing a uh, Royal Ghost, he could very well be running Giant and then just rush off his lane if we go for a Golem in the same lane as a Royal Ghost. So I like waiting. Lumberjack put in a lot of work there. After seeing Bait, I feel confident being able to go and cycle a Golem because we're up Elixir. We're up a lot of Elixir here. Okay, I'm just going to go for Mega Minion on top. I'm going to eat the Thick Boy, I presume. And uh, actually, no, the uh, the Girl Rascals aren't going to get too much damage, or the Thick Boy's not going to get too much damage. So I think that was the best play. Always sauce out the Mega Minion right on top of the Girl Rascals. It will bounce back and kill the Boy Rascal. And because the Boy Rascal doesn't do too much DPS, it's not that big of an issue, right? Oh, no. That decided to go lit up. Oh, man. Bro, Ghost, you're supposed to stay undercover as an FPI agent, man. You're not supposed to take the tower. Ah. Oh. All right, we're still going to do a lot of damage here. Let's go. Saving Log. It's all about retaining an Elixir advantage and then going for a Golem when you're up Elixir. I found a situation where I knew that if he rushed opposite lane with Rascals, I had Mega Minion and I got away with it. I ended up activating the King Tower early on, so I was able to use that as a resource. So he wasn't able to build like this huge offensive maneuver where it was pretty scary, right? Like I knew that I would be able to defend in any case scenario. I'm going to go in for a Night Witch off to the side so then Thick Boy isn't able to DPS us down. I presume I will probably have to go in for a NATO here. The Prince still got a hit, but then the Goblins didn't, so we're fine. I'm going to go same lane as him from this point on because he's going to have to go same lane as the tower. That is uh, much lower, right? So I'm going to go for a Lumberjack. I'm going to inevitably have to sauce out a Baby Dragon. So I might, I'd much rather do that earlier, right? Why mess around? I'm going to go in for a Poison because there's no other way of getting at that Princess. He's doing a phenomenal job of just constructing a really solid push here. But since we kept the baby dragon alive with that poison, because we poisoned early, we were able to defend against the prince. It looks like it's a pretty far back goblin barrel, so I'm going to accommodate that, going for a log, going to go in for a mega minion right on top. And this guy's an incredibly sad panda, just because our defensive capabilities are rock solid with this deck. Playing this super well. Got a huge amount of offense early on, and there's just no way for him to break through after we get that damage. We have multi fairy spells. There's just no way for him to get through. GG, man. Well played. And good luck in the rest of your grand challenge session. But we had to assert dominance on you, bro. We got a game against Eric7. And he's just in his leisurely clan. So we're going to chill and sauce out a Mega Minion in the back. I'm going to go for Mega Minion because I do have Night Witch. And I have Baby Dragon next in succession if he wants to go in for a balloon. Him going in for a very adventurous expo is uh, probably not the best play for him at the start of the game. So we're going to try to punish that. I want to go follow up with the Night Witch as soon as possible so then we can get some bats behind our Golem. And then he's going to go in for a Tesla, so 
This is going to be a very hard push for him to defend since he went aggressive with a uh, Expo early on. I'm also going to follow up with a with a Lumberjack just because it does DPS incredibly fast. So if you drop Skeletons, it wouldn't be distracted for as long as any other unit. I really like logging the Baby Dragon. I really like logging the Archers instead of dropping Baby Dragon here. I'm going to get some ship damage and I preserve my Baby Dragon. Preserve a little bit more Elixir. Or it's really easy to cycle Baby Dragon in the back, whereas like Log, I want to get value out of it. And I kind of want to cycle back to my uh, Golem, right? So usually the better play. He's not going to be able to go in for any unit. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can go in for a Tesla, but now you have no way of defending a Golem opposite lane. That's just a really terrible maneuver. So, like, I feel like it can just go in for a Golem and it can't do anything about it. He has to cycle four more cards. To get back to a Tesla in single elixir. You could probably do it if you really want to, but you're probably gonna have to drop a defensive expo because of this. You're gonna have to vigorously cycle back to a defensive expo. I poison it, and that's not a good trade. That's a negative elixir trade, sir. So I'm gonna go in with a lumberjack, and I'm gonna poison as soon as he drops a defensive expo. Yeah, so that's super. As I said, he wasn't gonna be able to get back to a Tesla because he dropped an offensive Tesla. Lumberjack is gonna be burying right on through. He's going to go in for archers, but we're going to get piped up a, uh, a piped up Night Witch, and the Night Witch is going to get a ton of damage on the tower. Let's go, guys. So just being a cognizant of your opponent's card cycle, find the opportunity to go in for a golem, and then you can easily cop Ws against Expo. So I wouldn't have went in for a golem if he didn't have Tesla out of cycle. It would have been very bad, because then he would have been able to apply pressure with a Expo opposite lane, cycle back to a Tesla, and then just wreck us, right? So imagine him rushing opposite lane with an Expo and then going in for a Tesla on defense. Our Golem doesn't doesn't get through and then he takes our tower. We'd never want that to happen. But since he didn't have the card cycle to defend, I went in for a Golem and he wasn't able to play offensive either. Good game, well played, and good luck, Eric. Pretty interesting matchup for us. I like this matchup a lot and I'm pretty happy that he decided to play very aggressive early on. All right, guys, we're playing against Joan. Explode Flash. I'm going to go sauce out the Lumberjack right in the back. Going the same lane as this Royal Ghost. Golem is really all about the Double Elixir, so I'm just going to respond to his units and wait until Double Elixir before I overcommit. Or not overcommit. The goal is to never overcommit, but you guys know what I mean. Before I commit to a Golem push. Got to go in for a Poison there, so it might be a Hog Rider deck. Or it might be a Golem deck. Not a Golem deck, but like a Giant deck maybe. It just seems weird running this. Hmm. Graveyard? Yeah, it's probably Graveyard. Never mind, it's Graveyard. So very rarely do I go for Golems at the river, but I still have the Mega Minion there, so I want to get value out of it. And as long as the Golem gets targeted first, we're chilling. So Mega Minion is still getting targeted, so I have to go sauce out a log, and we end up hitting the guard, so I'm chilling. Let's go. Gotta preserve that Mega Minion. Lumberjack is gonna rage up the Mega Minion and we're gonna get so much damage because we preserved him. Let's go. He appreciates that. He appreciates us preserving him. He repaid us in full. With interest a little bit. We got some tower damage there. Now which off to the side because we still have to cycle the Golem. Mike, no, I'm not gonna get hyper aggressive. I'm just gonna poison that and then we'll cycle back to a Golem, right? Then we can sauce out a Golem in the back and not really care too much. Oh, but if I poison that, then I don't have a great answer for the graveyard. I don't want to do that. Yeah, he's going to graveyard, right? <laughs> Is that a dead ice golem? I'm not going to go for a preemptive poison. I'm not that type of stupid, man. Also, now you don't have ice golem in cycle, so there's that for you. All right, very unfortunate. I think I'm going to have to go sauce out a NATO on defense. Otherwise, we're kind of wrecked. Rogos will die, but the Musketeer is on top of my tower, so I do have to sauce out a Mega Minion. Alright, we're going to go the same lane as him. I don't really think he wants to go and get hyper-aggressive in the same lane as us. At least I wouldn't if I was the Graveyard user. I would always want to go opposite lane. And we're going to go in for a Golem a little bit higher, so then he's not able to bridge rush us. So we're not about that at all. Sure, he could go in for a graveyard, but he's not going to have a tank, and then the Musketeer is going to die, so it's well worth that. I'm actually going to apply so much aggression that there is no way for him to go in for a graveyard at all. 
And if he does, then he loses the game because, you know, we have a golem on top of his tower. He has to get ready. He has to defend against the Night Witch, the Bats, the Mega Minion, and the Log rolling right on through. If that Mega Minion Bat combination gets on top of the tower, that's going to be all she wrote. In fact, the Mega Minion will finish him off. Good game, well played, and good luck, bro. All right, is this guy German? He definitely is. I'm going to go for Night Witch right in the back, and he's going to go split archers. So this is most likely going to be Expo. If I had to guess... No, it's not Expo, so I'm going to go for Lumberjack right on top of the Hog Rider. Deny as much damage as possible. I think that's pretty solid. The Hog Rider does only get one hit, and that's solid, so I can just go for a Log. No, do I even have to Log that? No, I don't. His Hog Rider is far out of cycle. So I'm going to go for Golem in the lane that he probably wants to go for a Hog Rider in. And he's down a lot of Elixir because he spent a Mega Minion on defense. You have to go in for Tombstone. You're definitely rocking Tombstone. Oh no, it's Pekka! This is why we can't have nice things. But his Mega Minion is out of cycle, so he has no way of counteracting my Mega Minion, I presume. So I just want to stack up a lot of units here. Do I want to go in for a NATO? No, I want to NATO the Hog Rider. Rather safe than sorry, guys. NATO it directly to the King Tower as well. Jeez, I was not expecting this type of deck. I should have been expecting this type of deck, but I wasn't. Super funky. As soon as you see Archer split in the back, you always think that your opponent is going to be rocking some type of like control deck with like Expo, but no, he's not. <laughs> I was kind of caught off guard to see the Hog Rider, and I was really caught off guard as soon as they saw the P.E.K.K.A. So the Mega Minion, hmm. I think I'm going to go in for another Golem. I'm going to let that Mega Minion lock on, then I go in for my own. No, I'm just going to eat it. Honestly, I'm just going to eat it and then sauce out a Night Witch. I have to eat a lot of damage, I feel. Since I activated the King Tower, the Mega Minion only got one swipe, so it was worth. If I sauced out a Mega Minion, then I wouldn't have that DPSing down the P.E.K.K.A., which would have been horrible for me, right? Nadoing that in the last second so it doesn't get a hit. I'm going to go in for a Log. I think we do kill the Guards, allowing my Mega Minion and Night Witch on top of the tower. Let's go. Give me damage or give me death. Please give me damage, though. Okay, I'm going to go for Baby Dragon as well. Then I'm going to go in with a Golem right at the river. Super aggressive Hog Rider. I'm just going to go in for Mega Minion on top of it. I dislike dropping Mega Minion there because it's it doesn't get affected by the P.E.K.K.A., right? Or it doesn't get affected by ground units that he could drop on top. But it, we're still in a situation where all we need to do is get the Golem near the tower. It explodes and then the Golem death damage and the Golemite death damage would take the tower. So I didn't even need a Golem hit there. So I assume he's going to go in really hard in the paint. I'm just going to go in for a NATO and log everything back. NATO plus log will kill the archers before it's even able to touch my Lumberjack. Our Lumberjack, we respect him. We appreciate him. You're not allowed to touch him. Good game and well played, sir. Very interesting to see this type of deck from him. I'm not sure about that, man. I'm going to go sauce out a log, kill the witch as per usual. Oh my gosh, this guy. <laughs> All right, we're going to go activate the King Tower because you did that just for the memes. Guys, pro tips, when you get a knight on top of your tower, you just go in for a freeze. Ultimate maneuver. Your opponent will be left in awe and they won't know what to do. They won't know how to respond. You'll get a considerable 200 damage with that freeze knight push.